Hey, it's him, and I actually read a book. Uh, so we're going to talk about it today. It's Solomon's Crown by Natasha Siegel. I don't remember where I first heard about this book or if someone maybe recommended it to me because the gimmick, <laughs> the, the, the what if of this book is Philip II of France and Richard, Duke of Aquitaine, this all happens before Richard becomes the King of England and the events in this book. Um, what if they were in love? Okay, so historical fiction, gay romance, I'm there for it. I wanted to try it. The author makes uh, makes it quite clear in an introduction that she has taken some big liberties with uh, historical accuracy in order to facilitate the story she wants to tell. So I would definitely say that this is not historical fiction, it's more like alternate universe historical fiction, if that's a thing. Um, because if you're a fan of history, if you want accuracy in the stories um, in, in your historical fiction, this might grate on you, especially if you are fans of this time period. Like if you go in not knowing anything about it, you might not notice the the changes, the differences, the things that kind of make you squint. But, um, and I only know a little, but the thing about this book that did befuddle me slightly was more like the passage of time and the ages of the characters because it was not incredibly clear to me like <laughs> uh like how old how many months had passed how old anybody was at any given moment um like i said this takes place before richard becomes king and knowing a little bit of the history and mild spoilers if you don't know the history but like i think philip Philippe Auguste was uh, crowned as a, as a junior king, you know, his father's still living when he was about 14. And then uh, Geoffrey of Brittany, yeah, Duke of Brittany? Yeah, he died when Philip was about 21, which comes close to the, those events happen close to the end of this book. Richard would have been seven or eight years older than Philip. In this book, it's not clear that it, whether that age gap is quite as big. Um, they make it sound like maybe Richard is closer to Philip's age than he really was. But he would have been almost 30 when Jeffrey died, I want to say. Um, so by the end of this book, you know, Philip is, you know, early 20s and Richard would be almost 30. Uh... <laughs> That, that's if you're taking the history, like if you're taking it by his history. Um, but again, this book kind of tosses a lot of that out the window. And um, tonally, it's a little bit strange. Somebody described it, I saw someone describe it as the Song of Achilles meets Red, White, and Royal Blue. And that actually kind of accurately for me sums up the tone where there's there's this almost like young adultish vibe even though these are like adult men doing things like war <laughs> you know i i don't know it was a very strange tone but the the idea uh, okay so the it, it's the book has chapters from philip's point of view and, and i'm using the english names here because the books in english they would have all been speaking french or dialects of French but uh, so it would have been Philippe and Richard but uh, Philip and Richard have not alternating chapters because sometimes you'll get two chapters by the same person in a row it's it's not quite one for one but um, and for me some of the problem was that their voices were not particularly particularly distinct like they did not sound like two very different people. Um, <laughs> so that was a little bit of a downer for me because I would have liked to have seen like a little bit more diversity between their tones and their voices. This book is written in a very lofty tone, uh, I guess, meant to kind of show the time period. The author, this is her first novel according to the bio. She's a poet, I guess. Um, so maybe like there's a lot of poetry infusion in this, a lot of flowery language, which would have been uh, 
fine for the time, I guess. You know, Richard was known to love poetry and, you know, troubadours and things like that. So maybe that was the idea. But I would have expected then Philip's chapters to be more like acerbic and practical and less, I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and so the other thing, like, I found some of the prose distracting because of the way it was written. So like, there are a lot of commas. And I write with a lot of commas, okay? Like when I'm writing, I will say like, <laughs> I actually um, debate my commas a lot of times when I'm writing. I'll be like, do I really need that there? And sometimes I do for clarity and sometimes I need it because there's a pause and I want like the pause to be very clear. But even for me, this book felt like it had a lot more commas than were necessary and, and like, I noticed and that's never a good sign like when you're like noticing things like that the other thing was that um they say pardon a lot and like again they would have been speaking French so I assume she means pardon but like like when they're when they're kind of saying like I'm sorry like they'll say pardon 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 and like again it just became very noticeable and a little bit distracting which again goes towards like it's bad when when readers are starting to notice your grammar and syntax and punctuation like that's not always a good sign um it, the other thing too is like it ends it ends with uh like not long after jeffrey's death and again if you know the history but if you don't, then... <laughs> so one of the famous... First of all, Philip and Jeffrey were known to be actually very close. If anything, I would have more expected a romance book between Philip II and Jeffrey than Philip and Richard. But, you know, go for the big names, sure. Um, <laughs> because Jeffrey and Philip were known to be close, uh, historically. To the point that when Jeffrey died, it is said that Philip climbed into his, like, casket <laughs> at the funeral or, you know, and I'm like, we didn't get any of that here. We, we got this, like, hint that Philip and Jeffrey had been friends and then it had kind of been, like, this sad betrayal, but I don't know. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel that. Um, and then we didn't see, you know any of the displays of grief. We saw Richard being angry and grief stricken and like refusing to see Philip after his brother dies. But we didn't see Philip's grief, which should have been as much or more, I would think. Um, it was, so that, to me, that was like an odd choice. And again, the author said that they were, you know, making changes to the history but like there's some really good fodder there that didn't get used and i just kind of like why why wouldn't you use that um and then of course it stops before the crusades and i'm like why would you write <laughs> a book about philip and richard being in love and not do their like not explore their time on crusade together it seems weird it seems like a weird choice maybe there'll be a sequel I don't know. It just, oh, it was odd. It was odd. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, the, the tone, the voices weren't distinct and I didn't quite feel Richard's grief and anger. I'm, I'm told he's hot tempered and he does have these moments where he like hits his brother or whatever, you know, things like that. The idea is that his love for Philip has tempered him a little bit. Uh, there are some really nice moments of tension between Philip and Richard, like some really nice ones. But then once at about, you know, halfway through the book or so, when they finally do just get together and they're, I love you, I love you, I love you to each other, it loses a little bit of steam. Um, uh, for me, again, you know, this is obviously all my opinion. Um... Yeah, so uh, it, it was good. It was okay. Uh, I, like, I did feel like they were going for Song of Achilles, but didn't quite get there. I gave it three stars. Um, 
because there were just a few too many things that that didn't work for me or that were just kind of I don't know like I said the the timeline was very like indistinct the voices between the two characters were not as clearly delineated as I would have liked some of the word choices and things I actually found distracting and knowing even just a little bit of the history there are some omissions here that I'm just kind of like huh but why of all things would you not use this tidbit or you know so yeah overall it was okay it was okay I know I just like went through a lot of things but like I said there's some nice moments of tension between the two of them um and uh, I liked Philip's wife, Isabel, Isabella. She's um, made into a very sweet uh, character, even if she is kind of like, she, she obviously ages over the course of the book because at one point she says, I'm 17 now, almost 18 or something like that. And we need to have children. And, um, but she, she acts pretty childish throughout the book. She, she acts kind of the same the whole way through, like, like she's still 13 or something, um, which was a little weird, but she was kind of a nice counterpoint. So I did like her character here. Um, but yeah, yeah, three stars. It was okay. It was, you know, I, I'm not sorry I read it. Uh, and I wouldn't say I wouldn't pick up another book by this author. Um, you know, it's a, it's a debut book, uh, you know, novel, like I said, it's just, she writes poetry mostly. So, you know, I can definitely see the influence of poetry on this. Um, and that's maybe not necessarily a bad thing, but if you, if you get frustrated with that level of prose, then that might not be your thing either. And again, if you're fixated on history, kind of following the timeline at the very least, your historical fiction kind of, then this might th throw you off a little. But yeah, not bad. Three stars. Uh, other than that, I am, you know, writing uh, and uh, I have a, I did a radio interview about the Switchgrass Crown. If you're interested, it's actually on my website and my in the media um, page. I will link it though below and you can go listen to that. Um, the Switchgrass Crown is my most recent novel that I'm working on a sequel for amongst other things. And um, I don't know what I'm reading next. If you have suggestions, something similar to this, or not something very different maybe uh let me know and if you've read it let me know your thoughts about it too and until then take care